The Elector Super Servo Tester can control servos and measure servo signals. It can test four servo channels at the same time. The Super Servo Tester comes as a kit and here is how you assemble it. Assembling the Super Servo Tester must be done in a certain order to obtain good results. This video shows the steps in the order that we think is easiest. There may be other ways, so if you want to take another route, feel free to do so. All the parts required to assemble the Super Servo Tester are included in the kit. Assembling the circuit board is easy. As usual, the mounting order is based on component height. Start with soldering the lowest parts, the resistors and the diodes D1 and D3. Be careful with the polarity of the diodes. Mount the crystal and the 22 picofarad capacitors C5 and C6. Insert the socket for IC2. Before soldering it, make sure it points in the right direction. Also mount the 300 nanofarad capacitors. Next, insert a 3mm LED. Make sure to put the LED in the right way. The short pin goes in the hole labeled K. IC1 is intended to lie down on the board and now is a good time to solder it onto the board. Use pliers to bend its pins. Now mount headers K1 and K2 and the small slide switch S2. Mount the large slide switch S1, header K3 and socket K4. For K4 choose row A or B depending on the pin labels on the OLED display. Make sure that the labels on the display are in the same order as the labels for K4. The open side of K3 should look at IC2. Next insert the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor C1. Respect its polarity. If C1 is a tall type you can mount it lying down. Mount power connector K5. Insert the 3 pin diode D2, the LM385, and transistor T1, A2 and 7000. Be careful as they look the same. Respect their orientation. Solder the buzzer onto the board. Choose the 2 pins that fit best and respect its polarity. Peel off the seal when done. Insert the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor C2. Respect its polarity. If C2 is a tall type, it can be mounted lying down. Finally, solder the 4 potentiometers P1 to P4 to the board. Make sure to also solder their mounting pins. Check once more the orientation of all the components and check your soldering. Insert IC2 in its socket. Plug the OLED display on its socket K4. Make sure that the labels on the display are in the same order as the labels for K4. Slide S1 to the control position. This means downwards towards the potentiometers. Turn the potentiometers to their middle position except for P4. Turn P4 all the way to the left, which is zero. Connect a 7 volt to 12 volt DC power supply to K5. The center pin is plus. Switch the power supply on. The display will show a welcome screen for a few seconds and then a stack of four rectangles appears. This is display mode 1. Turn the potentiometers to move the vertical lines inside the rectangles. The numbers to the right of the rectangles should change too. VCC should be close to 5 volts. Switch off the super servo tester. Turn P4 all the way to the right, which is maximum. Switch on the super servo tester. After the welcome screen disappears, a 2x2 grid of 4 rectangles is shown. This is display mode 2. Turn the potentiometers to move the vertical lines inside the rectangles. The numbers below the rectangles should change too. Switch off the super servo tester. Turn P1 all the way to the left, which is zero. Switch on the super servo tester. The display will now show a rectangle and the text centering screen. This screen is to help you cut out and grind a suitable rectangle in an enclosure for viewing the display. 
turn P1 to the right to enter normal operation mode. The Super Servo Tester is now ready for operation. 